The alien planet of Omiophysias is home to many different alien species, but today we'll visit the S prairie of northwestern Vicalistera to look at one species in particular, the Cagadoni. The Cagadoni, scientific name Cagadoni Cagadoni, is the sole member of its genus and is the type genus for the family Cagadonidae in the order Stegolassa, class Masculassa, phylum Petalia, and subkingdom Eteriovum. The Cagadoni is a decently large organism, but is especially large for a terrestrial Masculassa. It's about two times the size of an average Masculassa, usually weighing around 160 pounds, or 73 kilograms. Cagadoni usually have 32 short legs and move around rather slowly. Like most Masculassa, they have two tails, the lower of which is used for breeding, two ears, three ocular plates, a hollow mouth covered in olfactory cells that houses two dexterous retractable tongues, and they are born with six prolegs. In the Cagadoni, these prolegs fuse into three strong, crushing jaw-like structures as they age, and supported by the powerful muscles and the proleg complex, they give the Cagadoni one of the strongest bite forces on Omeophysias, a bite force of around 600 psi. Like most Masculassa, Cagadoni have a really good sense of sound, though as far as Masculassa go, the Cagadoni is pretty average. Not average is its sense of smell, which compared to other Masculassa is extremely developed, due to the bulbous base of its mouth housing many olfactory cells. Most Masculassa are covered in soft feathery filaments called misari, which keep them warm and can take on a vast array of colors and display various different patterns. The Cagadoni's Masari are mostly yellow-orange, with a darker lower body. Most strikingly, the Cagadoni has white stripes across its body. These stripes are unique in every individual. Though the yellow obviously helps them blend in with the general plants in their environment, the white stripes specifically help them blend in with plants in the genus Leucos tortosus, who are especially prolific in northwestern Vicalistera. These plants have long, winding structures from which flowers emerge in the warmer parts of the year. Although the flowers are temporary, the winding structures themselves are permanent while the plant is alive, providing great cover for a stalking Cagadoni. Like most Mescalassa, and indeed most members of the phylum Petalia, the Cagadoni has very well-developed eyesight, with good depth perception, color vision, and shape identification. The Cagadoni, like some other members of the order Stegolassa, is a rather intelligent organism, capable of observing different aspects and creatures in its environment, learning how to work with or around them, and passing on that knowledge to other members of its species. The various traits the Cagadoni has makes it the optimal heavyweight tertiary consumer on the S Prairie. As one of the top predators on the S Prairie, adult Cagadoni have no natural predators. In contrast, they are the predators of various other creatures living on the prairie. The prairie the Cagadoni hunts consists of heavyweight, slow-moving organisms, like the Cagadoni itself. Most of these are other Masculassa, though there is a species of large vermipod that the Cagadoni hunts as well. Much of the Cagadoni's prey have physical defenses such as spikes, thorns, whips, and defensive scales. Many of them also employ social defenses such as herding and alarm calls to fight against the predator. To combat its prey, the Cagadoni is a patient ambush predator, slowly closing the distance between its prey before waiting for the perfect moment to strike. When it attacks, the Cagadoni uses its crushing pseudo-jaws to severely wound its prey, to limit its mobility, and therefore its ability to escape or retaliate. It then continues chomping down on and tearing into its prey to kill it. The Cagadoni slightly changes its hunting strategy depending on what it's hunting. Prey with interior defenses are attacked from behind, those with posterior defenses are attacked from the front, and those with armor are attacked wherever their armor is weakest. Cagadoni will also act as scavengers if given the opportunity, using their developed sense of smell to locate carcasses. Though they prefer to feed on organisms that die to causes other than predation, they will sometimes try to take the kills of other top predators. The Cagadoni is easily the largest and most powerful of the top predators in its environment, but this doesn't mean that stealing kills is always easy, as Cagadoni lack the speed and maneuverability that the other predators have. If the predator they choose to steal from retaliates, an inexperienced Cagadoni could be in serious trouble. Temperate regions of Omeophysias go through eight seasons. The most productive of these is the Grand Summer. Like many similarly sized temperate species, the Cagadoni breeds in the soft winter to ensure that offspring are produced by the Grand Summer. In order to breed, a female follows a male's scent until she finds him. Once she does, she raises her head and loudly clamps her pseudo jaws and display to the male. If the male responds with his own clamps, they breed. 
It takes about 26 days after breeding for the male to lay either one or two large leathery eggs, and during this time, both he and the female build a nest for the eggs. After the eggs are laid, the female sticks around for a few days, urinating in the area and rubbing against the male in the nest to keep her scent around longer, to hopefully discourage any other females from seeking out her mate. Then she leaves. The female helps build the nest and defend it in the early days, but that's all she contributes to raising her offspring. It takes Kagadani eggs between 70 and 80 days to hatch. By then, the soft spring has started, the actual breeding season is over, and the mother's scent has long faded away. For the first couple of weeks of a Kagadani's life, it stays in the nest and has food brought to it by its father. Once it's around five weeks old, it's allowed to leave the nest, but must stick closely to its father. By the time most hatchlings leave the nest, grand summer has just begun. With the start of grand summer comes the return of various small ectothermic organisms. Young Kagadani often practice hunting by going after these smaller creatures, but the vast majority of their diet is still filled by their father's kills. Between 12 and 16 weeks of age, their second tail begins developing, their stripes start turning white, and their six pearl legs begin fusing into three. At this stage in their lives, their father begins teaching them hunting strategies for different prey, how to use their environment to their advantage, and how to tell if a carcass is good for scavenging or not. The grand summer is just over 14 weeks long, so by the time juvenile Kagadani start learning from their fathers, it's usually beginning to cool down. By the time the grand winter starts, juveniles are usually large enough and learned enough to tough it out with their fathers. When the next soft winter comes, a male with children will refuse to mate with any searching females, and since the young are quite sizable by their first soft winter, Killing them to make a male willing to breed isn't really an option. When the next grand summer starts, the juveniles are almost as large as their fathers and are increasingly independent. At some point during the summer, they'll wander off and leave their father forever, starting their solitary lives. Kagadani don't fully mature until they're almost three Omoyafusian years old, and they usually live to be around 35 years old. The Kagadani is a powerful and majestic predator, filling an extremely important niche on the S-Prairie, but it's only one of the many, many aliens that call this planet home. <laughs>